really early. I was like heading over to the showers and like standing there naked with like 70 blokes. I was like, you know what, is this the right thing for me? <laughs> you get you get really desensitized to it. Late. Right, y'all, welcome back to Comet Arms channel. Okay, so now it's time to get back in the swing of doing these reaction videos. I gotta say that two month break kind of made me a little bit rusty. But today we are checking out something pretty awesome. And I'm really hoping it doesn't get copyright claimed. I mean, if it does, that's okay. I'm just really hoping it doesn't get blocked because I think this is a BBC thing and they are very, very notorious for wanting to block the videos outright. But today we're checking out the Ocean Warriors documentary or I guess docu-series. It's pretty cool. It's about the Royal Marines and you guys have been recommending it a lot. So I'm very excited to check this one out. But yeah, you can see I have the facial hair. Now I think this is the last video that you guys will see me with the facial hair because I'm going back to work tomorrow and unfortunately I can't keep it. But uh, yeah, that's just the way it is here in the military. I can try and keep it, you know, to the edges of my mouth, the mustache, but I mean, if it's that short, it looks kind of creepy. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna go that route to be honest. But yeah, I'm going to Finland soon. So right now I'm just going to be uploading, you know, pretty inconsistently again, probably two videos a week. I don't like doing that, but again, I try and upload it ahead of time so I can schedule the videos while I'm away. So I'm not missing too much time. Um, so hopefully that works for, for y'all. But yeah, I'm gonna be trying to do that now. I'm going to Finland the 9th through the 16th. And then I'm also planning a meet and greet, which I'll probably, I probably would have done a separate video at this point, but yeah, I'm gonna do a meet and greet over in Finland at uh, Varustelica, I think that's how you say it. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. So I'll, I'll put details somewhere else so you guys can see it. But let's get into this video. It is very, very long and I'm just, I'm excited to check it out because it looks like it's gonna be some pretty high quality stuff. So let's do it. Quickly, go. The Royal Marine Commandos. Hell yeah. Britain's Is that Premier Fighting Commando? Force on land. Dude, their kid is sick now. And at sea. So we're gonna get on board that dive and we'll do our business. Ready to deploy at a moment's notice. Returning and burning. Hell us. yeah. Anywhere on Earth. As strike troops. Peacekeepers. Seaborne Raiders. Dude, this is gonna be good. Operating in the toughest, most challenging places. Is that Norway? Only a select few were good enough. Up here. Promoted to acting corporal. Hmm. To wear the green beret. Oh yeah. Wow. And you make his seat. This is the inside story of the commandos. Dude, yeah, this is gonna be freaking sick. Now, I needed, I didn't realize I needed like, a, I have a VPN and I needed a TV license still to actually watch this. So I promise you guys, I'm 100% watching this very, very legally, absolutely no torrenting involved here. So just trust me on that one. <laughs> okay guys, we're in a secure location. We've got central positions located around the fort, the moon state is waxing which means it's getting bigger which allows visibility good thanks <laughs> we should technically own the night against this enemy force okay looks like a pretty full moon the road to becoming a commando begins with the longest infantry training in the world hmm. yeah it's a doozy Twenty-six thousand hopefuls apply every year 400 make it damn it's really the hardest training you can do that's why i chose to join up Relatable, I can appreciate I've done that. I've nine to five for six years as a joiner. It was good money, but I wouldn't have got to about 40 and I just, I don't think I would have been happy like with, my, with myself. Get in there, blow hmm. some stuff up, get out. Let's do it. I used to watch a lot of superhero films, so I don't know whether I wanted to be like one of them. <laughs> I've got a lot of pride in, in what I'm hopefully about to be. And the commandos have done so many great things over the years, protecting the country and no kidding saving lives and I can't wait to obviously have my input and, and do a bit for the country and the world hell yeah he seems a little bit older I don't know I can't really tell because I know you can join the Royal Marines when you're 16 but I'm not sure how old you actually have to be before attending the training itself because I know it's a little bit younger than the US military as far as when you can actually join up but yeah it looks like he's a, a little bit older so it might help maybe for for the maturity sake 
But honestly, it's kind of a hit or miss. I've seen some really young guys be super motivated, while some of the older guys maybe might have some some issues to work around, or maybe just some some bad habits from civilian life. Kane's on his final training exercise, a clandestine raid of an enemy island. This oh, yeah. is the culmination of everything. It's a long time coming. They've been taught, and they've learnt, and they've repeatedly been taught and learnt. Fergie. What's required? Okay, move up to that corner wall. Irrespective of what people's views are, well, it's a very unstable world. We're pushing individuals to their limit and sometimes beyond because that's what we require them when we set them loose. Yes, sir, especially for commandos, smaller teams and whatnot. Nice cameras, holy cow. I prefer there to be no wars ever. That'd be the best outcome. But there's bad people out there and you need the good people to go in and so I'm out basically. <laughs> yes, sir. This looks like fun. Like a lot of fun. Especially with night vision. Really tricky. You don't think we'd actually make it from day one. You see they move and transform in front of you. Push inside! Push inside! It's good. It's a good feeling to be honest. I'm sure that the next generation of Royal Marines will be ready for the next threat. Hmm. Yeah, I think the U.S. Marines is generally pretty tough. I mean, everybody, when they think of the U.S. Marines, is, is going to be the toughest as far as just the basic training for all the different branches. But I do wish it was a little bit more selective like the Royal Marines was. And I think that's definitely what separates the Royal Marines. Having like the different sort of tiers of training, I wish the Marines had a little bit more selection so you didn't have as many people going in. But again, it is the US military, they're going to be bigger. They need to have, you know, I, I guess smaller standards or lower standards, but at the same time, there is a big population. So I guess it all kind of depends on how many people actually want to join, what are the incentives, and then what are the standards to actually match that. So, I mean, I guess it's a little bit of give and take. Take it. Do you get any? I'm guessing there's probably people out there, but they've never come to my office and told me that they're a snowflake. That's a weird question. <laughs> I don't think they're going to be joining the Royal Marines. I'd hate to be called a snowflake, I'm honest. I wouldn't see myself as any different or any better than any other 16 year old. It's just, this is what I really want to do, so I've just gone for it. Dom is the youngest lad in the troop and applied while at school in suburban London. Hmm. Yeah, and for all some people, get into trouble early. They get put in prison for selling drugs and that. It's not worth it, but it happens a lot. Push right, he looks right, tired. Right. <laughs> yeah, take it, take it. Any little scrap can end up in you just being stabbed, killed, whatever, you know, so it's best to get out of that situation. Yeah, hmm. room's clear, room's clear. Yeah, I didn't see that you side of London. Out, the right one, the wrong one. Luckily. Sometimes that just comes down to like your own life choices, what you choose to, you know, you choose to do that bad thing or you choose to do the good thing and then what choice you make makes like a drastic change to what would happen later on in life. This is hmm. one of the best things I can do. Well, a couple of lads on me to search this. Yeah, I agree. The military helps with that. Getting out of a bad spot. Young, but he's not amateur. There is lots of other things 16 year olds could be doing at this stage of their life. <laughs> but he's doing something positive, and hopefully, he's got a long career ahead of him. Having disarmed oh, yeah. the enemy, Dom and Kane reach the end of training. But they're far from finished. Hmm. To call yourself a commando, you must complete a week of arduous tests. And if you don't pass them all, Eight months of training will be for nothing. Yeah, but they get pretty well prepared for it. But even still, of course, it's brutal. This week is like the most important week of our lives so far. Hmm. Hell yeah. Three, two, one. Oh, the weather looks pretty nice. The first test, two and a half miles of uh, cross country undulating ground. Wading through Falklands bolts, veteran crawling through tunnels. Whoa, wait, freezing... what? Falklands veteran? So that means he has been in since at least like 82, 81, or even before that. What? Dude, that dude's been no, that's like insane to me. What rank was he? I can't see. Damn, a Falklands veteran. Dude, he's been <laughs> He has been around. I can't imagine there are many people that are still serving that have served in the Falklands. Maybe I'm wrong, but damn, what a career. Wading through bogs, crawling through tunnels. Hmm. You're freezing cold, you're soaking wet, followed by a four mile run with a shooting test 
at the end of it, which must be passed. Hmm. You've got to keep pushing yourself. That's that is that's all there. That's there and there, really. Even the terrain is gnarly. Let's go. Three, two, one, go. The endurance course tests your stamina, nerve, speed, and at the end, marksmanship. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. It begins on the South Devon Moors, home to the endurance course since 1960. It would be made look beautiful, but trust me, once you've been goosed there a few times, it's the exact opposite. <laughs> okay. You're just brushing past gorse, your legs are all full of red spots. I never really knew what gorse was until I came down here. Oh, I hate it. Hmm. Once you get in there, roads, just dig out. That's it, that's what's done. With an endurance course, I'll be honest, I felt sick in the morning, I was that nervous. So I just <laughs> I was trying to stay quiet, you know, just think about what I'm about to what I'm about to do. Yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> you just get super nervous. <laughs> <laughs> different people deal with it in different ways, nervousness and stuff. Some people don't get nervous at all, but a lot of people do end up dry heaving and stuff before. That doesn't give you morale, Damn, that's really <laughs> nervous. I'm nervous for them as well, but yeah, they just got to channel those that nervousness though, don't they? So you just need to control it. What is that on his wrist? I thought it was like a weird watch at first, but I don't know. Is that like a, a uniform item or that's just something that channel he's those, rocking? That nervousness though, don't they? So you just need to control it. He needs hmm. to be sick in his own time. If you haven't got a, a hint of nervousness, you're probably lying. Yeah. Partly because it means so much to you. You've come through all that training and you're desperate to pass the tests. Exactly. Same at, when I was at CQB school, when you're doing the tactical evaluations, you just get inside your own head. A little bit of fear is always healthy because fear comes with nerves. I feel like that drives you on because whenever you've got any like, sort of adrenaline, adrenaline comes from fear and nervousness, that definitely drives me on to, to do well or get what I want. Yeah, the getting wet doesn't help no, with the running. Me, what do we do? Never quit. I, I don't want to go into my dad saying I've failed. So, you know, that's one of the main parts, just thinking about that, you know. Yeah, everybody, everybody's got their own sort of motivators. It's kind of interesting to hear about. I wonder if anybody's ever like. I wonder if anybody's ever actually like left their their weapon behind. They kind of just forgot about it after the obstacle. I don't know. I feel like it's kind of hard. I think at that point it's like almost ingrained in your DNA to have this thing on you. Or at least that was like a big thing in the U.S. Marines. Even if your weapon was like within eyesight, if it wasn't within like one arm's distance of you then somebody might try and mess you up for it. You know, bloody hell. So you're trying to run up that hill after it and your legs are just hanging out. <laughs> the sandbag thighs. You're really heavy. Your boots are full of water, so that's an extra bit of weight there. You've got 21 pounds on a rifle. You know, it is a hard test. And it just, it's a slog, real just long slog where you can think to yourself, oh, I'm hanging out here. So yeah, it's definitely really hard. <laughs> That's like broke off for yeah, us. You just get oh, broke off. Over. I'm a bit of a big lad. I'm not the best at like endurance running. <laughs> Worst bit was probably my feet because both my insoles came out my boots. My toes were just pounding against <laughs> my boots with no insoles in. Damn, what? Like, you can't just stop just because just cause you're in pain or you're hurting. Where did they go? Pushing and hope for the best. That sucks. That really sucks. Your feet are going to get jacked up. I guess it's kind of cheesy, but you look at like the commando mindset, it's old fashioned Marines and stuff. I think about the history when I'm running down like the endurance course thinking hmm. like thousands of Marines, ex boonex that have all run that before. And I think, you know, that's what I want to be a part of. That's pretty badass. I thought the same when that I was at what Paris Island. It's down to really getting the job done. No matter what, you don't want them to look at you as someone who, who wouldn't be able to do that and, you know, or fight alongside them. Come on, let's go. It's <laughs> my time. So old school. To be a commando, you need courage, definitely. 
believe you could do it. Hmm. I've never accepted failure at anything. Hell yeah. You will set out to overcome it yourself. That is what it's all about. It's your state of mind that you are going to be the best and you are going to do the job. That's badass, dude. Clifford was 16 when he volunteered to become a commando and fight in World War II. I was the youngest of the six of us that joined. In fact, when we were in the recruiting base, I know he's telling like a deep story and whatnot, but this dude is like insanely tall. We always see that in these videos. You just get this, like, the random giant that sticks out. I think that's like different for me because in the Marines, you have all the tall people up front and then you have all the short people in the back. Like they actually make the formations based off of that, which is kind of weird. I don't know if they do that anywhere else, but yeah, you have all the short people in the back. They call it the little end. So you don't have stuff like that <laughs> when we were in the recruiting base there's a minimum height of five foot six and of course mm. like an idiot i stretched up and he said anyway you're on the right side of the growing part he said so you'll grow to it he said and your mates are going you might as well go all together nice five six damn on d-day all sorts of things were going through our minds we're going to normandy Oh, snap. To try and get into the beach. You imagine there's big ships, little ships, all sorts of different things in different states. Some were blown to pieces. We mm. mentally prepared by thinking, well, we are the finest. We are the British Royal Marine Commando. There isn't any better. And that carried oh, yeah. us through an awful lot. It the does mean a lot. To say, now, listen. There are only two on that beach, the quick and the dead, he said, and let's see you run. And the lucky, to be honest, Six especially for that. Time, and only two of us came on, me and Jack Mason, and he's lost an eye and a leg. Damn. The rest were killed. That sucks. A lot of men. Why did we do it? Because the little ones, hmm. you want them to grow up and have a, an existence you don't realize it at the time but you are giving them something back that money can't buy hell yeah Freedom. hell yeah now, I know the circumstances were definitely different, and sometimes, you know, especially on the U.S. side, people didn't have a say in whether they were going to serve or not. But as far as the motivations for why they're actually doing what they're doing, it, those you know, generally stay the same as far as what you see. Even back in World War II versus now, again, people wanted to do it to secure a future for you know their, their countrymen and uh, the future generations. People who want to get a leg up in life as far as, you know, getting uh, education or what have you. People who just want to serve their country. People who have like, a, you know, family lineage of serving the military. A lot of that stuff stays the same. Circumstances definitely affect it, but it's kind of cool to sort of see that mindset. <laughs> Damn, those stairs have to be brutal. Hey guys, slow down, slow down. Start prepping yourself, yeah? Start prepping yourself straight over to there. Start prepping. Okay, for the next stage. Hmm. The lads finish the time sprint back into camp. But if they can't get six out of ten shots on target, they will fail. And their dream of becoming a commando will be over. So how far is it? All the way around. I'm not sure if I've ever learned that. Going through the tunnels. A fully submerged with a rifle. Got all sorts of muck in there. And then when I was shooting, I had stoppage. I had three stoppages, which hmm. is where your rifle only shoots and it, the the rounds don't fire. Was it the bad rounds or the rifle itself? But still managed to get the seven out of ten on target. Nice. Just scraped it. So okay. Happy days. I was a bit nervous when I was because you could do all of that and then just end up getting a stoppage or missing your rounds and stuff. <laughs> The end of the day, you've got to be fit to fight after you finish it, so you do have to hit them rounds. Mm. But you might have got a, a sub a sub hour time in the endurance course, then you miss your rounds on the target, and that's you failed. So yeah, that was in the back of my mind. It doesn't look too far, but 
Of course, the stress levels are going to be up there, huh? Probably like 25 meters, I think. Still a pretty small target. Rounds, managed to miss a round. I wanted to completely ace it. Hmm. Ten, I got nine. Yeah. Days, what, you yeah. missed the one? Yeah, missed one, yeah. <laughs> I fully missed it as well. I don't know how I've done that. Yeah. Get still a pass in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, hey, pays the bills. What was your time? I got 65.59, so 66 minutes, which I'm really happy with. 73 minutes to pass, so I'm happy with that. I never want to just scrape pass. I want to do it as best I can, so, yeah, I'm happy with that. One test down too. Yeah, good start to the week, okay? Everyone's fast to shoot. All right, boys, so good effort, yeah? Everyone under 70 there. We'll start the week off high, all right? Everyone's got a tick in the box, yeah? Oh, yeah. One down, three to go, all right? Make sure we stretch and we get plenty of water on and we're nice and loose, all right? Happy, boys? Oh. 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 His hair looks oh, like fake. That's how, like, left, nice it right, is. <laughs> left, right, left, right, left, double, march. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Nice. Yeah, you know it's got to feel good to like get one test down. The focus commando on the other tests stuff. have remained largely unchanged for over 80 years. If you can't pass the commando test, you shouldn't be there. That's <laughs> the top and bottom of it. No sugar coating. I think the fundamentals uh, are the commando tests. Those are the same. They have prevailed since the Second World War. I love obstacle courses though. We maintain the same standard. I think that's what's so important to the Royal Marines. Dom and Kane have passed the first test, but there are three more to go. A nine mile speed march, the Tarzan assault course, and the 30 miler. Yep. All done carrying the 30 pounds of equipment a commando would have traditionally taken into battle. That weapon sucks though. It just like throws off your balance. You just start getting like pissed off at it because it keeps hitting you and stuff. When most people start those tests, they are invariably carrying injuries. They probably won't have slept particularly well for a, a few weeks beforehand. So their body will be worn down before yeah. they start the test. Good lad, off you go. Yeah, for real. All it takes that like, one wrong step, roll on my ankle and that's it. Out, out the game. Hmm. That is probably my biggest fear now. Kane's already spent an extra 10 months in training because of injury. An extra 10 in week months? In 17, I had to leave the original troop I was with because of a stress fracture. That sucks. I just got told, listen, you're not carrying on. That's when the demons start coming out and telling you, you're not going to be able to do this. You, know, you can't do it. Good resiliency, though. You're just having a battle in your own mind, and it just makes it so much harder. Let's go, big job, let's go. I'd really, I'd love to try this, man. You need the determination to be able to push on when the going gets tough, when it's cold, wet, miserable, and most people want to give up. That's <laughs> when you need to actually crack on. Yes, sir. Man, I have so much respect for Royal Marines, though. This, for the last this is hard. Months, the recruits have lived at the Commando Training Center in Limston. <laughs> when I yeah. came down here first day, I, when I stepped on the train, when the doors actually closed, I was like, what, what am I doing? Straight in there, let's go! Dom, oh, yeah, the, the youngest in the troop, is the first in his family to join the military. When I got in and it was started straight away and I was like, is this the right thing for me? Especially wake up early in the morning because of school, you know, you don't, you wake up early. But... I thought they were like, I don't know why, <laughs> I thought they were carrying like, uh, like long boards, like skateboards. They just have uh, ironing boards. Are those like brand, it looks like they're like brand new ironing boards or something. Do, do you get like issued certain stuff when you get there? I mean, of course you get issued stuff, but do you get issued like ironing boards as well? Because at school, you know, you don't, you wake up early, but not <laughs> early, early. And when we started waking up really, you know, really early, I was like heading over to the showers and like standing there naked with like 70 blokes. I was like, you know what, is this the right thing for me? <laughs> you get, you get really you know, desensitized to it. Really chilling out, you know, enjoying myself a bit more, but you end up going down the wrong path. <laughs> Yeah. Joining up was a bit of a change, but I'm not I'm not scared about change. Yeah, it That's definitely why helps. I joined here to grow and do better and become a better person. Getting me out of the place where I was.
I've lived on council estates all my life. I've seen a lot of people in my life that I don't want to be like. I've made the hmm. right choice by coming here, that's for sure. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's an interesting thing as well. Like, kind of like another motivator that we were talking about before is you just start to see like people sort of going down the wrong routes or people who have been down the wrong route for a long time. And you want to do everything in your power to make sure you're not going down that route as well. You're basically learning from their mistakes. And that's something that I, I think I can relate to for sure as far as joining the military. It's just, it's a good option. And if you're going to join the military, again, some people like kind of like why join the Marines. They just want to join the service that's the most difficult, the most selective. So you can really embrace that and go feet first into it, you know, 100% and it's very, very different from what you're doing in the civilian life. Kane and Dom are preparing for the second test. To pass it, they need to work together as a team. Because I was younger and people were older than me, I was like, I'm not going to have any mates here. The oldest lad in the troop, he's old enough to be my dad. But it's weird. It doesn't really matter what age you are. End stage of training, you know, everyone's really close in the troop, you know. Jesus. Don't really joke you're not off the move. Because we're all going through it together. We all know how hard it is and the pain you go through for it. So when you share something like that with the lads, it's kind of like you don't really have anything like it. You bond with the rest of those guys around you, and they bond with you. Hmm. And that takes you through the rest of your career and beyond. Hey. And we do, True. we each other. We become, you know, best man at, each, you know, at people's weddings. And you become <laughs> godparents to their children, and they become godparents to your children. <laughs> you have a sense of belonging, and that camaraderie will never go. Hell yeah. Rest to the front. Hey. All the weddings, everybody showing up in uniform. They are the best, and I want to be part of the best. Oh man, the nine miler, dude. 